My name is Becky. And right now, I have too much stuff. I have all kinds of old pictures and plates, a lot of small things that are, that are family things, a lot of chairs, tables with different designs, some of which are very ornate. The thing is, I have also 500 boxes. Everything I have is in the storage unit. My name is Walter. I own the storage facility where Becky stores her belongings. Shoot. Becky's the first tenant that has occupied 16 units at one given time. I was behind, way behind in my, in my mortgage, and the, the bank they actually took, took the house. My name is Ken, and Becky is my mom. We were kind of like her last resort of a place to live. I love my mom, but I don't love all those problems that come with it. My name is Michelle, and I am Becky's son's fiance. Ken and I have worked really hard to buy our town home and make it nice. When Becky moved in, the process kind of stopped because her, her stuff just overwhelmed everything. I'm driving them crazy because I brought too many things in. I have been going nuts over the way she has treated my house. She's been given an ultimatum already. Michelle has told her, uh, you're gonna have to find a place to live, and I don't know what she's gonna do, because she's basically in debt for uh, $20,000 for uh, her storage units. I feel sorry for Becky, but uh, in the near future, if she's uh, still occupying units and not paying for them, then I would have to take a legal process and. Uh, have her evicted. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Woo! I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert and I specialize in hoarding. We have a crisis here. We have two days and we've got 16 storage units. So that means we can do about eight a day or approximately one storage unit an hour if we're lucky. We've got so much to do, we have to work quickly and make strong decisions. Is everybody ready? Yep. Yep. Are you okay? Yep. So let's go. Let's look at this. Keep the nut. You want to keep these soaps. Yes. Look how small of a world this is. Are we going to really be talking about soaps when we've got uh, 16 units the to go? Containers. What are you doing with that one? This is a great cookie sheet. For whom? Me. Wait, come back okay, up here. Right. Talk to talk to a person rather than the stuff for a second. I'm Dr. David Cutts, and I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorder and specifically hoarding. The most frustrating thing with, with Becky is her inability to recognize what's needed to be done to take care of the problem. If you pan down at what we have here, yes. this is more, That's this is what we, we need you for. Attention. Yeah, she's focused on little dolls and clothes. There are all these doll clothes, I keep them. Okay. Even though they're completely stained up and soiled. Some are and some aren't. Then what are you planning on doing with the doll clothes? I can get good money for some of them. And she's not focusing on larger things like the antiques and the, the garden equipment and the larger things that'll actually help her out. Spending a lot of time talking about this instead of letting me go through some of this stuff. That's yeah, the whole we're point. spending a right, lot of time on health. trash when we need to focus on things that are worth money okay. so you can live a great life. You're pissing me off. Just let me at least do this one box right now and see how long it takes me to do a couple boxes. My mom and Michelle, they don't really see eye to eye. They argue on a day-to-day -day basis.
Yeah, hi, Dorothy. Hi. Sorry to interrupt, Walter. Watch. Ah, watch it. Becky is only going through the trash. I'm going to see what's in here, that's all. Pulling stuff off the truck. I'm going to look at these plastic yeah, bags way, and see what's in them. Is not allowing us to put anything into trash. Oh, no, they're, they're valuable. About as valuable as roadkill. 20 people rendered powerless. Look at everyone sitting there waiting for Right, you. I know. I want to try to get down there, but you're spending all this time. You haven't made fun. any effort. I'm waiting for you. Could I Im impose on you to come over and um, lay down the law with us because you're the man with the power? Let me head over there now. I'm about a half an hour away. This is real quick. Trash. Well, as quick as I'm making it. Okay. Well, I'm making it quick. Well, do you want that? Yes, I want that. Why? It's broken. Look. I can see. I'm what not blind. There's not. I'm going to stick it someplace. Where? Oops. Bend over. OK. I'm out of here. I'm done. Yep. Well, you're so pushy about it, Michelle. Walter. Becky. I've lost my patience with you. And I'll tell you how it's going to work. If it's not done by tomorrow, All right. I'm going to serve legal papers against you. Sure. It's going to take 30 days. In sure. 30 days, I'm going to come cut your locks off. Yeah. Trucks are going to pull up here. All right. And everything's going to go on the top and in the trucks and out to the landfill. I'm not going to sort through one item. And that's okay. what's going to happen. OK. I'm serious. I mean, because I've lost my... No, I'm, I'm serious. I, hey, I've been... I've been very patient with you. I, I tell you, you've been wonderful. I'm happy that Walter's um, doing what he needs to do. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's basically junk. You can't knock the guy. He's let her pretty much squat here for a year. We got to get going. Where are you going? We can't match up puzzle pieces We got to right get now. going to move in to, to get this... Okay. Everything's organized. There. Where does this go? Yeah, yeah, this is, go. All right, you can take that. What about this? OK, that's Blue Willow. You can take that whole set. Antique? Yep. All right, keep this white one. OK, what about this? That can go. Antique? Yeah, well, they go with the antique show. Yeah. Everything under it is an antique. Oh, my god. That thing. Nobody what the hell are you going to do with these? these? This is not going. What th is it? What are you going to do after 30 days with all this stuff? We don't have time for this. Just get no, off my case. No, we don't have time for this. Get off no, my case. No, we don't have time for this. Get we have 500 boxes. No. You're wasting everybody's time. OK, Michelle. Right, I'm pulling all the boxes out, and they're, they're going somewhere. Oh, shut up, bitch. I'm not going to waste my time anymore. What Becky's doing right now is completely deflecting making decisions. You're worried about the most piddly That's great. She is not addressing the need at hand. I just feel very exhausted right now. It's a faster clip than I'm able to keep up with. You see what they're doing down here? You've got to go through 500 boxes and do it fast. I'm being treated like I'm stupid. Set all that down. I'm going to right over here. All right, Becky, we have all these boxes to sort, so I come on. I hear you. And I'm not used to that, because I'm not stupid. She shouldn't even be allowed to have a say. What in the world? A box within a box. Why would anybody keep stuff like this? Becky, yeah. I have Walter here. Rebecca, Walter. hello. There's a pile of trash next to the office. Right, yes. That has to go. That right. entire pile cannot be left here. No. At, I know. at end of day. Right. So, as long as we're all on the same page here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here's what we accomplished today. We went from 16 storage units down to four. Everybody did their best. But you know what? Oh, good. There was a big roadblock, and her name was Becky. 
I don't know that I'm necessarily trying to keep too much, because some things I'm keeping, the boxes and stuff, because I haven't gone through them yet. Well, at the end of the day, there's still many problems. My house is still being hoarded. She still owes Walter a lot of money, and it's a shame. I don't think it'll ever change. I didn't get out of it what I thought we would. I'll never be back at these units. I'm done. I'm totally done. I'm incredibly concerned about Becky's relationship with her son, and Michelle. The very thing that's at the heart of their conflict is still there. Nothing's been resolved. Becky didn't learn anything from this at all. My name is Chris, and I have a full-time job driving a tow truck. People have told me that I'm not a regular, everyday guy because I'm a little excessive in wanting to cling to what I find uh, comforting or pleasant. So I tend to hoard a lot of things. I'm coming to the viewpoint that my home is cluttered. Unusually cluttered. Unpleasantly cluttered. I'm Rochelle, and Chris is my neighbor. Chris is very unusual. His mind just doesn't think the way normal people think, so there's no rhyme or reason to the house. And Chris sleeps in a sleeping bag on the floor right there between the boxes. Most of the stuff he hoards is stuff that he finds on the street. Oftentimes, my eyes dart over to the garbage can, and there's something interesting, something uh, electrical or mechanical sticking out of it. I just want to go home and take it apart and see how it works and enjoy that process of discovery. He's spending probably between fifteen and $19,000 a year on storage units. My storage units are somewhat problematic because uh, the expenditure exceeds my monthly income. Chris is in serious financial difficulty with his credit cards, with owing the IRS. I'm dimly aware that this spending pattern is not sustainable. He's on a path of destruction. My name's Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner specializing in biohazard and hoarding. Dr. Chabot and I have a lot of work cut out for us because Chris is a very fragile, sensitive man. And if we push him too hard, he's gonna break. Uh, you, so you wanna do one item at a time and see either yes or no? That would work for me, would that work for you? Just picking it up once and making a decision? Yeah, that's, that's an intelligent way to do it. Chris, are you getting upset? Well, it, it's it, it's just a process that has to be done. I I, I don't know what okay, to but say. Talk I mean, to me. No, take take a second. We're just starting to go through the beginning items in the kitchen, and Chris is already showing extreme agitation. You seem like you're throwing things out of anger now, and I want to make sure that you're not throwing away things that you really do want. Gail, my sister, is upset, and I, I'm trying to alleviate her suffering. I, I'm trying to cooperate. I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I specialize in compulsive hoarding. Chris is in a really intense state right now. He has the sense that if something is going to be done, he has to do it, and he has to do it really fast. If you disengage from this process and just toss stuff without talking through it and understanding why and all the emotion involved, you're not going to learn anything from it. Can you please stop and focus? Please, I want to make sure we're on the same plan. So we're at the end of day one, and he's basically not giving up any control. He has to go through every single box. We have to have a house that he can live in that's safe and functional, but we also have to clear storage units so he will have that money to spend on rent and utilities. So we have the house and all these storage units, and one day to finish it all.
Okay, Chris. And this is everything that was loaded up. You have basically a whole nother apartment size worth of stuff in here. And this is costing you $7,200 a year. How many years have you had it? Yeah, decades. One decade, that's $72,000. Wow. And you have five more of these still to go. If you look, think of $72,000 and how long it takes you to make that much money, would you give someone $72,000 for what you want to keep out of there? I don't know. I don't know what's in there. Well, let's, 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 let's go. Let's see what it is. Let's, let's see what it is, yeah. Here, Chris, come down here. So go right on the edge, and then you can just drop it in the trash if you don't want it. Okay? Please? Oh, well, I got plenty of help, Corey. But it doesn't make sense. Everyone's having to touch I, I know a lot place. of things don't make sense to you. Why can't you just slide down here, Chris? If Chris lays out the program, he's fine. Once we take over and say, this is how we want you to do it, he's going to put up a wall, and then anybody outside of that wall is an enemy. Can you put the box at the end of the table, please, Chris? Please. Just so this guy can, Just, can, we can come. We can get more boxes out here, and you can dump I don't need trash more bag. boxes at a time. I need one box at a time, and then I can do it most efficiently. But if I'm talking to you, I can't work. I really want you to think, what will my home say about me? And more importantly, what will your home say about you to you? To you. I've been very patient with Chris, trying to find his language. But now it's time to speak my language to Chris. And my language to Chris is a deep part of me believes that you are worth more than what you've been doing with your life. I just think that you're ready to, to come out, you know, ready to join life again and to be a more alive, current, current person. Uh -huh. That, that just happened to be an easy box. Maybe oh. you just to make better choices. You ever thought of that? Maybe just getting good at this. You got a good momentum going, Chris. Chris, you're in a zone. It's me and Rochelle, we're, we got our thing going here. Yeah, we have good. the assembly line, see? It, it works. Mm -hmm. Out of all the stuff you've been looking at, you're letting go of about 95% of it. Oh, that's great because you're looking at it like, I really don't need this stuff. I'm just enjoying the sensation. It's, it's a new way of thinking. It's almost like a intoxicant. <laughs> this is a major, major turnaround for Chris. Carpe diem, carpe diem, right? <laughs> Seize the moment, Dad. Seize the moment, when, seize when the, the moment. Because I got it a It won't team. happen later like, on. Got, right, that's right. It'll happen now. <laughs> It'll happen now. Or it won't happen. <laughs> that's right. I mean, what a transition from Chris fighting everything to cleaning his entire house and cleaning out all of his storage units. I mean, what more could we ask for? If you guys are ready, I would love for you to see your home. My home? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not your apartment, your home. You ready? Yes. Let's go look. Oh my God. Whoa. Oh, wrong house. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. Whoa. I'm a hobbyist, oh my yeah. Gosh. Oh mm. my gosh. Ah. That's beautiful. Wow. That is beautiful. Oh. <laughs> that is bad. <laughs> I want, to, I want to keep this process going. I want to keep it alive, and I want to keep moving forward into more dimensions of what, what makes me happy. We're very proud of you. I have great hopes for Chris. He wants to be with people. He likes people. Now people can come into his house. Would you like to have people here from time to time? You know? Yeah, that choice is precious, yeah. This is right. a place for living. Right. Yeah. I'm overjoyed. It's just a remarkable fluke of fate that I was able to 
invite this wonderful bounty into my life. I feel tremendous relief from the fact that my brother has been transformed. He has embraced the world. He was really gone to me for a long time. Maybe I'll have my brother back. My name's Kathleen, and I'm a teacher. Yes, I'm a hoarder. I save clothes that everybody in the family's outgrown, materials to use for art projects at school, like a toilet paper roll. Hey, you can make something out of that. You can make multiple things out of that. I just feel guilty about throwing something away in the trash that could be recycled. Bottles of shampoo, plastic bags, a lot of paper. My name is Melissa. I'm 16 years old, and Kathleen is my mom. Her hoarding really, really affects me. I couldn't walk around without stepping on something, and it's a really hard place to focus when I'm trying to work. It's gotten to the point where we don't have a working refrigerator. I think our microwave might work, but we don't really have anything to put in there. I barely eat at home. When my dad passed away, my mom's hoarding got like a million times worse than it was before. I think my hoarding did accelerate after my husband's death. If somebody wasn't there to nag me about it, that probably made it worse because it was just me. I don't think that my dad would approve of the way we're living now. My name is Paula, I'm 52 years old, and Kathleen is my sister. Last time I was in her home, I discovered how bad things really were. I told Kathleen I would not sit back and continue to let Melissa live under these circumstances. I'm an attorney, and I do have the resources to take Melissa out of the house. It does hurt my feelings to think that my sister Paula would try to take my daughter out of the house. I feel like a villain for exposing her, but I've done all this trying to prevent a situation such as Child Protective Services coming in. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. My name is Geraldine Thomas, and I'm a certified professional organizer specializing in chronic disorganization. All right, Kathleen, I know you're nervous and apprehensive about what we're going to do today, feeling a little Very. stressed out. <laughs> I think one of the biggest challenges working with Kathleen is going to come between Kathleen and her sister. Her sister definitely wants to control the situation and call the shots. Paula, I can't help noticing you're already really emotional. <laughs> what, are, what are you thinking? Oh, I just, uh, you know, guilt. That you have to. I haven't okay. done something before now. My name is Mark Pfeffer. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and specialist in the treatment of people with anxiety disorders, including compulsive hoarding. When you approach these things, you think, coulda, shoulda, woulda. You've been very instrumental in making all this happen. Problem. So I hope part of you within that guilt could also be proud of yourself. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Lead the way, yeah. Kathleen. Yeah. April of 07. Can I throw one? Toss. I'm gonna throw it away. Toss. Throw. Keep. Never been opened. Happy birthday candle. I mean, it's never been opened. It can be used. Throw it away. Thank you. <laughs> 
It's just empty bottles. Was that from your high school graduation? Okay, this shelf has nothing on it anymore. Ugh. We have three empty shelves. Woo. We're about to have four. <laughs> and a full trash bag. Stuff. God. The situation I was living in was very serious. I didn't realize how bad it was until we uncovered a lot of things. I don't know what that is. I had no idea what was under all that stuff. Is it worse than you were thinking? Yes. Okay. First of all, there was a smell that automatically I almost gagged. The health hazards are just too numerous to count. She has spoiled food, trash, black mold, everything that should not be in a person's kitchen, it's in there. Marco, what are you looking at? Gross. It was clean completely, this entire kitchen, by okay. Marco and my daughter three years ago. And in three years now, we have mold. The smell is just incredible. What does it smell like to you? It smells like something is dead in here. Really? Yeah. It just smells strong well, maybe, decay. Maybe a rat got in. The kitchen definitely surprised me. It's a lot worse than I thought it was. I want you to look at the expression on your daughter's face and on your son's face and use it as motivation to never let this happen again. I was paying attention to the look under the mask, there was extreme disappointment um, and anger. It was a symphony of emotion that um, I won't soon forget. This is completely unhealthy, and I, I hate living like this. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know how it came to this. <sighs> <sighs> Do you know what we're doing in here? Do you know the goal of this? Uh, my family wants to get in my room. They think I'm hiding some deep, dark secret, and they don't believe that I'm not. OK. And I told them there's nothing nasty in here, nothing wet, nothing moldy, that there's a lot of school stuff. I honestly don't know why she didn't want people in that room. She sleeps in there. She couldn't even get to her bed. There was not a path. I think it's the worst room in the house. What was that one? Doesn't matter. That is not trash. When was the last time you used it? Yeah, you did. That is not trash. Mom, you have No, I'm not you throwing that away. That's so not trash. Many that is of those. very expensive. Those are all over the house. Where are you going to put that? For Kathleen, the room that she is storing most of her emotional laden objects is in her bedroom. So the reason why I feel it's important to finish the job in that room is so she could realize that she could let go of those items or donate them and the world won't come to an end. These right. are activities that we do. You can do make that on the, the computer. Class. There's no point in keeping all this paper. That is what you say about every single thing in this house. Oh, and I'll just lay this aside for a minute. Everything we are seeing in this house is everything you have ever hoarded, period. You don't have a storage facility? Not anymore. I couldn't afford it. I actually was shredding what I thought were legal documents, and all of a sudden I found a document for a storage unit. But you do not have a storage facility? No. And you weren't still paying on it till 2007? No. Well, how come I found bills for 2007? 2007? 2007. I have one. So once again, this little trust factor between us has been broken. This crap is showing your children. You don't care about their college. You don't care about their future. You don't care about them now. But you sure as God care about having storage units in two different states to put this crap in. That's the message you're giving to your children. 
and to me. And once again, lying to me. Okay, I've, I've said enough. I got very upset because once again, she has spent money that she doesn't have on a storage unit for her hoarding. And yet these children have gone without. Kathleen, do you know why your, your sister's so angry? Are you hearing a few of the things she's saying today? Yes. And what, do you, what are you hearing her say? I need to get rid of my crap. It was really necessary for Kathleen and Paula to have this blow up this morning so we could show Kathleen what Paula was feeling over some issues that I think has been going on in the family for many years. It's on you right now today to make decisions about that storage, to make decisions about being honest. And the most important person to be honest with is you. You hear me? Yeah. So let's work together and take care of it. Get back to work. Christmas in August. <sighs> These are donate. Donate. Oh Those can go. Trash, trash, and more trash. All of this. Take a look around. Oh. What do you think? It's Some awesome. places for your magazines. I'm excited to have my room, and it looks like I'm gonna be able to have friends over really soon. I'm so excited for you. This is great. This is exactly what I wanted for. There's still work that needs to be done, but no, I wanted her to have her space. This is a long time coming. I couldn't resist. Oh my God. I kept telling myself and other people that I could do it by myself. And obviously I couldn't, because it went on for years and years and years and years and years. Oh my God. This is the person who lit this whole idea on fire. Do you feel appreciated? I definitely do. <laughs> I don't think she's going to be as quick to try to cover up her acts because of being caught. I mean, it's obviously not going to be easy for her. She obviously has a problem. So we really just got to seek out help for her. And hopefully she can be better and we can keep this house clean. I am not resistant to therapy. I'm excited about therapy because I know it can only help. I'm Linda, and I manage a storage facility. Sometimes we have people that move out. We'll go and find it abandoned. And when a person doesn't pay for their unit, we auction them off. But if it has a value of $300 or less, we can dispose of as we please. Then I take the stuff and sort through it, see if there's anything good or whatever. Then I'll bring them home, wash them up, then have a garage sale. It gives me something to do, make a little extra money. And it just got to be more than I would imagine it. One day a while back, me and my daughter actually had been looking in the paper and we said, well, there's an auction on storage units. So we decided to see what it was all about. And that's when we bought our first big, big unit. <laughs> it was a household full. I thought this is terribly overwhelming, but yet the thrill was there. I'm Candy and Linda's my mom. When she gets a unit or she's gonna buy a unit, she just lights up. It's like she gets a glow to her. 
It's like Christmas for a little kid. Yeah, man, I get a thrill out of it and a high. You know, I don't imagine it would be to a drug addict that's it basically is the same adrenaline rush that they get. I've purchased probably at least 30 storage units, if not more. But I kind of got ahead of myself and bought too many storage units at once. There's times I would wake up in the morning and go check on him, and I realize he's not in there. Sometimes I would think I even heard his voice. It was, it was an adjustment. It, it was a hard adjustment. I'm Linda Sue. Linda is my sister-in-law. When I went to visit her the last time, she got a job at a storage unit, and I thought, oh, no. I would like to say that she could control it, but reality is she's got an addiction problem, and she needs help. <sighs> I'm Tanner, and I'm Linda's grandson. She has the garage sales, like, Monday through Friday. It's got a stain on it. <laughs> and when she doesn't get rid of the stuff, she puts it into her carport or her house. When I think about my mom's house, I get anxiety. Everything's piled at least waist high. You have to turn sideways for the path that's in there. Something has to be done. If there was a fire, I'm not sure how they could find her in the house. If there was a medical emergency, I don't believe the ambulance could get a stretcher in to get Linda. For her own safety, I would absolutely be willing to turn her in. I'm Dr. Melva Green, a psychiatrist specializing in hoarding behaviors. As I approach Linda's house, there's a sign on the door that says, go to the other door, because I actually can't get in. And in going to the other side, it's very obvious that Linda is a hoarder. Hi. Hello. I'm Dr. Green. I'm Linda. Hi, Linda. Nice to meet you. Kind of just walk between things. I have my little paths here. So this is my living room. You can see I've made an attempt at sorting, but I get so far and I get frustrated and overwhelmed. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner that specializes in biohazard and hoarding. Are you guys ready to get started? Yep. yep. All right, let's go. I would rather get this up and hang on to that. All this stuff can go, except for the firewood. First day of the rest of your life. Yeah. This stuff here doesn't go. And those three little things, they stay. Is this stuff you're keeping right here, Linda? Yes. All of it? Yes. Yes, it all stays. Mom. Mom. No. Mom, Mom. Look. Oh, Candy, Mom, look. stop. Please look, look. Look at this stuff. It's. We're trying to talk to her, and she's just walking through like we're not even there. Like, we're talking to a wall. She's just shutting down. She's shutting us out. If you let the house get clean, Mom, you can have the memories. Yeah. 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 But, Mom, these are my memories, too. Well, how could they be your memories? You were too busy doing drugs. And you're too busy hoarding now. You're choosing this stuff over the good memories, these memories. Yeah. Holes in it. Mom's probably got to it. You want that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good job, Mom. You guys are working together nicely. Yeah. What shifted? She's just kind of listening to me a little bit. 
Yes. I guess I submitted. <laughs> I think Linda submitted a little bit herself, yeah? To accept the help. It seems the dynamic has changed between Linda and Candy. They're actually listening to each other. They're being kind to each other for the first time in this process. What do you think will get accomplished? At this pace, I'm gonna have my whole house clean. That's a big turning point. You should be proud. Yeah. This is a huge breakthrough for the entire family to actually be able to communicate with one another, to be able to work side by side. That's huge. Let's do it. Yeah, it's been difficult. You have been frustrated, but is it worth it? Yes. And I stuck in there. I didn't give up. Sure did. It was really hard, but I made myself push through it anyway. And I come out better. Do it all. Wow. This is really nice. Everything I went through is worth it because if I had my house back. Yeah. My mom, she's let her guard down, finally. I see the mom I used to have coming back. Well, we hope this is just the beginning. It is the beginning. I know that. Good. Because I've made up my mind. <laughs> I'm Debbie, and I'm a hoarder. I like to collect clothing, antiques, shoes, anything that I think is a little bit unique and different. I've lived in this house for 37 years. My house is a full two-story house with a basement. The rooms are big, the ceilings are high, and it's 100 years old. Walking into the house through the back door is very distressing because I see the entire hoard. From there, I have to walk through the house in order to get upstairs to my bedroom, and everything along the way is a hoard. And it's difficult. It's very, very difficult. Oh, God, help me. I'm Bethany, and Debbie is my mom. Walking into my mom's house because of the piles of stuff, Everything's a challenge to get to. The whole house isn't functional. It's horrible. It's just awful. My mother qualified for a loan modification on her mortgage. However, that loan modification was only temporary, and her mortgage will be going back up. She's on a fixed income, and that is a great concern of mine, financially, for her. I'm Tom, and Debbie is my girlfriend. I do love you so much, and it's easy. Tom is very understanding. I do love him. We've had a tough time because here we are, 60, eight years old, we can't come here. The relationship has definitely been challenging due to her situation with her hoarding. If I don't clean up, it will continue to be a hardship on Tom and me. I'm getting too old for hardships. I worry about her all the time. If she's eating, is the house cold? I am afraid that 
she will fall and get hurt in her house. I worry about her all the time, and I think about her all the time. I don't think she thinks that, but I do. My dad died two and a half years ago, and my sister died very recently. My aunt was a hoarder, and she stayed in her house all the time. And she passed away in her house, in her hoard. Her son, who doesn't live with her, found her. She had been gone several days. I felt tortured because I didn't know if she had been crying out for help, if there's something that I could have done, you know, got her to a hospital or something. And it, it bothered me tremendously that she died alone like that. Debbie's sister passed away in her house because of being her hoarding and being alone. And I do not want to see that happen to Debbie. I worry about her safety all the time. If I don't clean up now, I'll continue to live this life. And I don't think that I can stand this life much longer. I would feel no hope or see any light at the end of the tunnel. There would be nothing to look forward to. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I'm Brandon Brona, professional cleanup expert. Today, we are here to help Debbie get her home back. We got a number of people here at your disposal. We got the cleanup team, we got the professional organizers, and you have your family. We are all here to support Debbie. Oh, Debbie, you. you are going to get the most attention you've gotten in your life, and you, it's going to come to us. You are probably right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So Josh, you haven't been in the home yet. No, I haven't. What are your worries and concerns? I'm worried that it's gotten a lot worse since the years passed when I saw it. And I'm worried for my grandmother's safety because I know it's not a safe environment. And I know a lot of that stuff, it can be used, but there's just so much that nothing can be used. Brandon, I don't know if we need you. No, Man, no, he's, I'll just, tell you what, yeah, I was gonna say, like, usually, uh, you might be out of a job. <laughs> I am impressed. Yeah, we are definitely impressed. <laughs> are we ready to get going? Yeah. All right, <laughs> that's what I like to hear. Toby, are you ready? I'm never going to be able to get through all this by the end of the day. That today. is why we want other people to help you make decisions. Brandon just said we're going to do 30 more minutes of taking stuff out of the house, but then everything else we're going to address. What's going on? All this is brought up. Mm -hmm. I understand the process. OK. I think some should be brought up. A lot can be brought up. We are making some good momentum, which is great. You know, we're, we're getting through the process, which is what we expected. Um, we're getting through your process. I don't want my stuff outside overnight covered up. Debbie, I can assure you that every day when we leave, your stuff will be secure. I know it all has to come out eventually. That's fine. Too much was brought out today. If we can keep the process moving along, we can keep you warm, get you back over so that you can continue sorting. Dr. Zazio is here to support you, encourage you. I'm here. We understand your concerns, and we're going to figure out a way to overcome it, whatever obstacle comes our way. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, Debbie, keep it up. Let's go. We took things from the kitchen. We took things from the eating area adjacent to the kitchen. You know, we, we basically took out enough things to fill two dumpsters. The unfortunate thing is none of those things are going into the dumpster. 
We get to the house and where's Debbie? We can't find her anywhere. We're looking around and we come to find out that she's in the house and it seems like she might be stalling a little bit. Yesterday she was a little upset because she didn't get as much done as she wanted to. So it seems a little surprising that we're all here ready to go and she's not. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, Doc. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm okay. I'm in a lot of pain. How okay. Arthritis and the cold don't get along. Yep. We're gonna be pulling things out of the out of the storage today so that you can make some decisions. And we're hoping- You mean out of the storage? Out of the storages that we're in front of right now. And we're gonna hope that you're gonna make those decisions quicker. But what I'm gonna encourage upon you today is to delegate more, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, ready to go? Yes. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's do it. Boom, 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 I want. You want all three of these? Yeah, and I want these too. Debbie. What? Can we stop real quick? Can we make eye contact? Look at me, okay? You have a box there of shoes. Three there. I'm on the fifth tote of shoes. You gotta get rid of more. There's 365 days in a year and you probably already have enough shoes for every single day. Mm -hmm. You can do this. Debbie tells me that she has built a closet specifically for her shoes. So I decide I'm gonna go and see what that closet looks like. Look at all the shoes oh. she has in there still. So. Oh my gosh. So she's already saved like five bins of shoes. Five bins. I don't know what we're gonna do. I gotta go talk to her. Miss Debbie, I'm finding multiples of tennis shoes. Brand new tennis shoes that haven't even been worn yet. We have five bins of shoes that you're saving. We have an entire closet fill with shoes. Mm -hmm. What if we benefit a local organization by donating all the ones that are in boxes? No, absolutely not. Donate the ones that are in the box. Yes, and no. bless an organization no. with those no. shoes. No. You already have five bins out here of shoes that, that are you, not in boxes. That you've decided to keep. If you kept all those shoes, you're at like, 300 pairs of shoes, Debbie. You can't keep that many pairs of shoes and have a house that's cleared out. Wow. I don't remember being this I think they, we need to go in, baby, so we can see everything. Because when I was little, I remember the house being a little cluttered, but I never remembered the room having anything in it other than my stuff. So she needs to get rid of the stuff that's not as important and keep what's very important. That way she can actually use it. So what do you think, Han? You wanna, wanna start to try to go through some things and get this room ready for you to come in and stay and hang out in? Okay, let's do it. This is garbage that can go. This is just a pile of random stuff I found. Trash. Trash. You're gonna get in trouble. Come on in. How is this looking to you? This, uh, it's disturbing to me. I'm upset about it. I'm upset about it because I did not want this worked on. My closet is much more important to me. Right now, I don't have any interest in here. I don't. So Debbie, I, I have to tell you, I am a little concerned because you have told me how important it is to get Josh back in this room. You know, the horde also has has just robbed me of so much time that I could have spent with my grandson. Time and opportunity for him to come and stay in the room that I got ready for him. And so yeah. I'm thrown off by saying that, that this room isn't important to you. Doctor, 
I did say that it was important to me to set this room up for Josh. When he was smaller, I was very shocked and a little upset when she did say that she didn't think anyone would be staying there and it wasn't a priority. If I'm gonna work on this, which I'm not going to, I don't get what I want done in my closet. I have to prioritize what is most important to me in my house. We got the van ready to go to yes. take all the donations away. What, what's in the black bags? And it happened. The whole process is back at square one again. This is just, this is you awful. Go this? Let's, let's grab a second bag. You want to go through this? Are we dumping it? So you want to go through all no. this and pick out the things no, that you want? I don't want to go through all of it. No, I don't. So then why can't we let it go and put it in the van and donate but, it? Carolina, it's already been decided. OK. That's what we were doing, and we can't keep trying to talk her out of something that she doesn't want to do. Got it. Mom? Yes. Hi. Hi, hon. Yeah. I know that you've been really adamant about things not coming out of the house. Nothing can, more can come out of the rooms until this stuff is taken care of. There are good clothes of mine in both of these, and there are good clothes of mine in there. But we can take th those things out so we can clear this so Brandon's team can come and help you, please. We're running out of time, and I know you're feeling that, and I'm feeling that. When this is done, I want you to have a nice, clean bathroom and a nice, clean, comfortable bedroom. I'm starting to get concerned about the number of keep items that we have in the U-boxes. It looks like over 100 containers. So I'm thinking, where are we going to put them? All the items that are coming out of the U-box that are labeled keep are either going to have to go in here, the little that can go in here based on the limited amount of space that we have, or in the basement. Are you OK with that plan? No, not quite. There's no room in here. There's absolutely no room in here. If things don't go well enough to get the U-box mm -hmm. emptied, then I will rent my own U-box. Debbie is rejecting all of Brandon's suggestions as to what we can do with the keep items. We've got the upstairs bedroom. We've got the basement. We've got areas downstairs. And she's basically saying they're not coming in, and she's adamant. At this point, I realize we're just circling the wagons. You'll have to probably get three U-boxes to be able to store that no, stuff. No, she's going to have to get about four to five, because we're still accumulating things. There. OK. That's going to be really costly, because it's going to take a long time to go through those boxes. OK, so even though we were supposed to be going in here, we've totally switched gears. No, Let's go no, downstairs. No, 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 no. I'll look. I'll, I'm, let me look in the U-boxes. Debbie, that's not what I'm saying. Is Debbie, there, listen. If I'm up here, and you're talking about taking stuff out of the U-boxes that I'm keeping, Debbie plans to get her own storage unit and requests that we load all of her keep bins into these other storage units. The bottom line is, we've never done this before, and we've never agreed to do this before, because that doesn't make any sense. I'm not feeling good about any of this. But at this point, we've got to go with what she says so we can keep moving forward. It's the solution that I want to do that is not going to break my back after you guys leave. Oh my God! Oh, honey, wow. look at this! Look at this! Oh, oh my, my stuff God. is gone! 
Look at this, baby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, somebody had Nana's kitchen. I know, Nana's oh, kitchen. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Look at oh, that. That's so nice. Look you at can that. walk. Oh, oh my oh. God. This was a communal effort. And the one thing that I want to say, Debbie, is it's important for you to go forward and to maintain it like this. Mm -hmm. Because you deserve to live with dignity mm -hmm. and respect. Mm -hmm. And your life in this house had really deteriorated mm -hmm. significantly. Yeah, I did. Here I am, 68 years old, feeling more excited about life and, and looking forward to life more than I ever, ever have before. But there's more to the house. Mm -hmm. Yay! <laughs> Let's head into the dining room. To see the things gone, to see the things that were kept organized, how clean everything is. I forgot how beautiful her home is. It's just, it's awesome. It's out of sight. I mean, we have the first floor all covered. I am pleased to say that we were able to get one of the bathrooms fully functional again. Thank you. But unfortunately, we weren't able to tackle the upstairs like we had initially planned. Mm -hmm. We weren't able to tackle the other bathroom. And unfortunately, Josh, we weren't able to get your room together. Now, Debbie, your room is going to be something that's going to be an ongoing project. Mm -hmm. And we believe that that's going to be a task that the family is going to be able to tackle together. Mm -hmm. I would have the family tackle this here and use the organizing services that are going to be offered for the stuff out there. Because every day that those U-boxes are out there is one more dollar out of your pocket. Right, okay, right. so it has been an honor and a pleasure working with all of you. There's one more surprise. Okay. Tom, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Doctor. Debbie, can you have a seat over here? Here? Yes, sure. Would you sit down? Sure. Honey, I fell in love with you 50 years ago. And we've reconnected three years ago and been, been together for three years now. But I want to show you my total commitment with you. Oh. Will you Will you marry me? Oh, my Lord. Oh, Tom. Yes. You'd make me the most happiest man in the world, Debbie, if you said yes. OK, well, if you, if you want to drive. I'll drive. I'll ride right along with you. OK, honey. <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. This cleanup had an actual beautiful ending for me because I got the woman of my dreams found for the rest of my life. Thank you. I love you so much. Hi. Thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.